Watching you tear meat off the bone puts weird feelings through my body. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And you are not in the studio today. You are, uh, you're hanging out with the fam. Freaking Corona. Yeah, we, uh, we had some people that we were, or I should say, I, my household was in the vicinity of, and, and so we're taking it safe, being precautious and making sure that uh, Ian's family uh, doesn't happen to get any bugs and keep everybody safe. You know, we did have a buddy get it, and uh, there was a little window there where every symptom that he said that he had, I had, but by the time that I, had, I got a test, it was about... I want to say eight to nine days later from when I would have been exposed and, you know, fortunately took, took care of myself, tried to stay away from people. And, you know, there were no other reports, anybody that we came into contact with, or I came into contact with that reported showing up positive. And I mean, I wouldn't say it was, it was just kind of, it was just kind of iffy. I'll be honest with you. I was a little disappointed when I found out I wasn't positive. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, let's just get it over with, Yeah. you know, but um, yeah, yeah. The doctor told me I was going to be positive though. She said my throat was on fire and it, uh, yeah, I feel like was, there's some puns to throw into here, but I, it might make the uh, podcast explicit. The so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we're feeling good in my house. We just want to make sure we're preca- uh, keeping everybody safe. So, um and uh where, where are you going with that you want to make sure that we were precautionary <laughs> you kind of got stuck there yeah my uh vocal uh skills have gone downhill since i've been staying up till 1 a.m so yeah uh, and i have no, no I shortage of work going ahead of me tonight as well because <laughs> we are uh, recording the uh what are is our now annual um holiday gift guide uh podcast and so we're excited to be back here for another year we made it a year ian how about that a year a lot got got a lot done in that year (laughs) we've we've done some pretty epic things and uh all right favorite part go uh mountains views snow caps rocks idaho idaho and, and i would say even to venture just uh some of that washington trip too but uh, I would say the peak for my, um, if I were to pull the first vision of this year, would have been Burnt Knob. Yeah, I could I could see that. But the other thing is, too, kind of gets uh, a little lost in the shuffle. The first event that we did remote was Winchester Bay. Yep. And we, we lucked out for a couple of days there, probably got a good probably 75 to 100 miles on out there without the weather being a problem. That was a good time. Yeah, that was a great time. And then the weather yeah. teased us a little bit on that <clears> Saturday and then cleared back up for us for an epic uh, huck fest and, uh, and a good wrap to the event. So right, uh, pretty stoked on, you know, what we were able to accomplish in this Rona year. Um, you know, a lot of people weren't able to do much, but uh, towards the end of the year, we were able to close out with a bang. And um, I hope that uh, everybody listening will be able to close out their year with a bang, possibly finding some deals that they're looking for. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to 21. We're looking forward to having a great time. And uh, for some of us, the best way to start that process is to get a few extra accessories on the car and a few, a few things that can uh, enable us to go further, do more. Well, I can tell you in 2021, the thing that I'm looking forward to most is Segway releasing content, teasing Zach, Zach <laughs> getting excited. I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited content. to see that thing come out. Seeing that video of it doing donuts really kind of what got the? my juices moving. <laughs> <laughs> what thing? <laughs> Well, they yeah. teased a um, an actual uh, prototype uh, doing donuts today, and um, it's there was some body ch- body style changes to that thing too. Yeah, a little bit. They also widened it and um, gave it a little more clearance. So it looks yeah. like they did some suspension upgrades, uh, possibly a bigger tire, um, and so supposedly these things are starting to roll out in Europe. Uh, but there's been no American market uh, teasing of the of the unit. So um, I think only the ATVs are starting to come out yet. Um, we'll see where the UTV comes in. Yeah. But um, I'd love to at least see them show up at an event so we could uh, actually hop into the thing and check it out. For sure. And uh, and test Spread out the hybrid power train. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think hybrid, I've mentioned it before, is the future of uh, off-road. And um, yeah, I think that if they can play their cards right, they could dominate the introduction to it at least. Yeah, I think as it sits right now, it's things are delaying so much that if another player wanted to jump into it, if a Can-Am or a Polaris wanted to jump into it, they probably could. 
Yeah, there's there's going to be some big things coming up here pretty soon for uh, the major OEs in the American market for sure. And uh, I don't foresee anyone coming out with a hybrid powertrain right away. Um, but you never know. Maybe they'll right. surprise everybody. Right. Well, let's jump right in. Um, we've collected a few things, each of us, over the last year of items that we have personally used, uh, purchased, and used out in the field on the machines, on overland trips, on camping trips, whatever the case may be. And uh, these are a few of the uh, things that have stand, stood out to us as far as um, high value products, things that have really made a difference for us and um, are things that would be great gifts for uh, you or your loved one uh, this, this holiday season or your partner in crime. And uh, so, yeah, let's uh, jump right in. I think one of the biggest things that we've solidified this year, Ian, is the need for, com you know, comms. And uh, we got some great solutions here. Uh, uh, one from each of the major uh, uh, vendors in our market. Uh, we got uh, both uh, PCI radios and rugged radios offering up some good solutions for handheld options, uh, which, you know, if you look back at our, our podcast with um, Steve from uh, rugged radios, you know, there's a large majority of people that can benefit from a handheld radio in most scenarios, no matter what they're writing. So uh, why don't you give us the rundown on what you just picked up here uh, this last month? So I've got picked up two of these while we were down in San Hollow. Um, <clears throat> handhelds, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but handhelds like to go missing. Uh, when you're on a big group and somebody isn't running comms, you'll hand off some gear. Sometimes it comes back to you. Sometimes it doesn't. I think uh, my normal... Uh, my normal inventory is somewhere between three and four handhelds. I'm back up to four. Just picked up the new RDH 16 Cs. We didn't get a chance to test them out too much while we were down there at Sand Hollow. Just some uh, brief stuff within throwing distance, but I can see where the where what they're talking about is really a reality. Where the the, the audio is a lot cleaner. It's a lot clearer. Uh, you definitely can hear a lot better in it. And as Zach can attest, even at five watts. Most of our most of our uh, hard mount units in our cars are anywhere from 25 to 60 mount. These five watt units will surprise the, the heck out of you. You know, I mean, we've we've picked up very clearly off a handheld. I would say, what do you think, Zach? Maybe about three miles out in the mountains. Yeah, I mean, I ran a handheld for the BDR trip and was able to communicate with everybody as far as you know when it was when the time came. You know, you're not going to communicate 20 miles out uh, when everybody's a ridge or two lying past you. But uh, I was able to listen in and make sure I was educated on what was going on. Right, right. But, uh, you know, like I said, sometimes these things just surprise the heck out of you. It depends on the terrain. And some of these runs, you get up at high elevations and you spend a lot of time at high elevation. So, you know, if if maybe one of the bigger units is out of the budget, if maybe one of the intercoms is out of the budget, definitely look at these things because something's better than nothing. And a lot of very, very critical information gets relayed on trail and being in the know does not suck. For sure. And, and uh, <clears throat> so those um, rugged uh, handhelds, they come in both UHF and VHF uh, variants. And if you listen to our podcast, Steve goes through a good job explaining that uh, VHF is definitely a, a longer reach uh, radio for open, clear line of sight type radios. And uh, UHF is a, a great option for getting around objects and mountains and things like that. Um, so uh, check that out and uh, make the right choice based off of your needs. Those run about, um, uh, what are they, about 195 bucks, And then they're on so, sale yeah. right now for less than $150. Um, and then I have the controversial uh, Bofang 8-watt UV82. And you can pick these up at PCI Race Radios right now. You can pick them up uh, for less than 100 bucks for two of them. So I think they're about 50 bucks a piece. Um, and that's actually a little bit more than what you can get on Amazon. But the difference is, is that one, you're getting it from a company that will give you, you know, customer service and things like that. They're also programmed and licensed to operate. Uh, and so you don't have to go and get a licensed uh, radio permit to do broadcast on the channels that come on their handheld. So just like radio, rugged radios, they, they've solidified a solution for you guys, the consumer to partake in these radios at a good price and, and do it legally. So check them out, check out the details um, at both ruggedradios.com and PCIRaceRadios.com. Yeah, it's a, it's a great feature. Just really emphasize how critical being able to communicate on trail is. You know, I, I think radios are kind of ascending into being one of the first modifications, one of the first additions that people make to their cars. 
Yeah, you, so. once you've learned how to operate with communication, it, it's a different ball game completely. Right, right. All right, so moving on, we have, I'm gonna go into the Power Tank Pro Series Tire Repair Kit. This is something that I have uh, shown before on the social media channels, um, but this is the Power Tank Tire Repair Kit. This kit is pretty legit. Um, it comes in a really heavy duty case that you would see like, um, like a PRP seat or something built out of. It comes with uh, straps for the roll cage. Um, it's Velcroed shut. Uh, it pretty much is everything you need to repair your tire on the trail. So if I can get this thing open for you, you can see that it has a ton of plugs, it has a ton of tools, it has your your um, rougher tool, it has your pull tool, it has valve stems included, it has lube, it has pliers, it has pressure gauge. I've included my uh, lug nut adapter in there. Um, and so this is a pretty awesome little kit. Um, and it should be, if you, if you're a guy that just gets a pinhole in your tire, like we did on Idaho, I was able to quickly manage the hole, plug it and get moving on. Like we didn't have any problems going through, I think maybe five minutes. Um, and if you are one of those guys that throw your machine into rocks, um, I've seen, you know, holes the size of quarters get plugged with these things. So, um, don't ever fear uh, a plug change kit. They'll, they'll sell, they'll save you in the time of need for sure. Um, and the power, the power tank pro series tire repair kit, uh, retails for 65 95 and you can get that on their website or any of their dealers. Well, my first gift recommendation is for <clears throat> the, the lovely miss, miss Jeffers. And that is the Canon R5 <laughs> mirrorless, uh, <laughs> Zach, we we've gone this far. We've gone one calendar year without 120 frames per second. What do you what do you think about 120 frames per check per second coming on I, board? I think we're gonna have to put this camera to its paces and see what it can what it's capable of. Well, they say it overheats, and we will we'll find definitely out. find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, I was just talking no. with uh, Cameron today about his R5, and he says he loves it and uh, hasn't had any problems with it yet. So. Um, Cam Hotchkiss? Yep, yep. Don't even, don't even listen to him. I don't even think he's even opened it yet. <laughs> Last time I talked to him, he hadn't even opened it. So I'm pretty sure anyway. he's uh, rocking the Instagram stories with it right now. So yeah. Well, I, I had to, I had to poke fun at Zach because cameras are basically like one third of his life. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so and I'm, and I'm dreading the next purchase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, we're gonna start a GoFundMe for a camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone can contribute. Yeah. But uh, you're pretty stoked um, on that camera. That's that's pretty awesome. I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, the CFast cards show up tomorrow and I can oh actually use the thing. So, yeah, good stuff. But uh, so anyway, back to business. <laughs> My first recommendation comes by the way of a gentleman that we've gone, we've tore off many miles with, and that is Wes Inskeep, uh, former Navy SEAL, guy that we did the Idaho BDR with. So he had this little apparatus right here on his head at night and I wanted to get eyes on it, and he let me use it for about two days. What it is, is it's the Streamlight Sidewinder Compact 2. Now, it's pretty basic in its features, so if I press it once, light turns on, press and hold it, it'll go through varying stages of brightness, tap it once, it'll turn off. The thing that I love about this, the conventional lithium, I think it's like a CR123 or whatever the heck it is battery, it'll take one of those, It'll take a, uh, a double A or a triple A and it'll run on all three. So you don't have to have an abundance of lithium backup batteries. You don't have to have abundance of double uh, A, triple A. Honestly, anything just laying around will power this light. It is plenty bright for hiking, much less set setting up camp. It's, it's pretty dang durable, but it is crazy easy to use. Um, you can find these guys off their website. You can find them on Amazon, something fierce. I want to say I paid somewhere in the ballpark of maybe 70 bucks for mine. And we've, we've got a little infinity marker, my plus or minus uh, 80 bucks is where you should be able to find these guys at this thing right here. You know, I got asked, I'm not even exaggerating this within the last two to three hours. I got asked, what is the, what is the secret, uh, the special gear you take? And I didn't know how to answer that. Uh, when somebody asks me, what is the special gear? Maybe I'm thinking to myself, it's the stuff that you've tried. It's the stuff that you've used and had really good luck with that maybe most conventional, you know, most people aren't thinking of. This is one of those items. It would be one of those items for me. It's, it's a real specific headlamp. And I just love the fact that I can operate it with pretty much any battery. So pretty handy. 
And that thing uh, also has a white light, a blue light, a red light, and a UV light in it, I think, too. Uh, it may. Uh, I think you, you might have to, my, my version, you might have to change a lens on it. But oh, okay. It, yeah, it's uh, pr- pretty pretty straightforward. Yeah, those are pretty pretty sweet, and they come from the tactical industry, so they're proven technology and proven quality and durability. If I remember right, it's like a mil-spec headlamp. Yeah. And they have yeah. some cool mounts for it, too, so you can mount for it pretty sure. much anywhere. Right. Yeah, if you can figure out a way to mount it in your cab, it does put out enough light. It'd be a good dome light or something in the cab of your UTV. So to go along with that, I didn't write this down, but I have here just a, a headlamp from Coast where you can get them from like Home Depot or anything like that. They run on triple A's. Uh, these things are super bright. And what I like is that they're super compact. There's not much to them. They run on triple A's. They have both white and red in them. Um, and so you can throw it in your, in your back, uh, to, to work on the car, change a belt at night, whatever. Uh, but even nicer, what I found on the BDR trip was that, uh, the red light makes it easy to wake up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, do take care of whatever without blinding yourself or anyone else around you. So, um, just like the light you, you showed, it has that night mode with it. Um, but these, if you're, if that, if you're not in the market for an $80 headlamp, these little coasts, I think they go on sale, um, on black Friday for like 10 bucks at home depot or whatever, uh, pick up a few of them. If one gets broken, no big deal. Um, and again, they go off of triple A's and you can just, uh, throw one in there. Um, so you have down, uh, Butler maps. Um, you have quite a few of those. I have all of them with the exception of Northeast, um, which is, I think that's a run that goes from like Massachusetts up to Maine. I have pretty much everything on the West Coast. And that's these guys right here. You can just find these at butlermaps.com, kind of pick your route that you want to try and tackle or you want to learn about. They'll send you this out. Now, this helps finance the efforts that Touratech, that Butler, that, uh, that a lot of these entities that, that do that, the, the backcountry discovery group, group does to go out and put these type of trails together, to put these type of uh, maps together. So by all means, please, I mean, it fits perfect into a stocking. Go out there. I mean, usually if you place the order, these things are showing up within that week. Um, I get a little obsessive with those things. I'll spend a very, very large quantity of time pouring over them so that I know every camp spot, know every waypoint. Um, they're good. At, they'll even tell you pretty much what to expect from an altitude standpoint. They kind of break down, especially as it pertains to the BDRs, they'll break down what to expect from one day to the next as you tackle ter- certain sections. It's I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's critical. Like You could just throw a GPX file, but as in my opinion, as these runs that we start tackling become more difficult and we've knocked two of the easier ones off, uh, I think this map is going to become that much more critical to our planning. Yeah. And they, and they have all the critical things that you need to know, like some of the key fuel points and, and different stops along the way. Um, even some, uh, viewpoints, but, um, more or less what I find valuable in those is they just inspire you to go and do, um, you know, the first step in, in tackling something in an adventure like this is just knowing the knowledge and, and getting some of the materials under your belt and, uh, the Butler maps get that going for us. All right. So my next, um, recommendation is that uh recently gopro came out with the hero 9 uh camera which is a huge step up from kind of where they were before a lot of really cool features are you going to hold one up ian no oh i I thought you were reaching for one and you're going to surprise me no just give me a minute i'll go get it (laughs) (laughs) so um they came out with the hero 9 uh they last year came out with the hero 8 which wasn't really that big of a deal outside of you know some of the the upgraded resolutions or whatever but um the Hero 9 came out, but what that does for me is it pushes the price of the Hero 7 Black down. And the Hero 7 Black can get uh, purchased from GoPro for $250, um, and at other different places you can get them for cheaper than that. And the Hero 7 is an amazing little camera that can do a lot for you if you're interested in documenting some of your rides and all that. Uh, but the GoPro is not really my my pick per se. My pick is the uh, GoPro roll cage mount from UPR. So um, recently I was on a podcast at the Dirt Life Show with uh, the guys from UPR and um, they just came out with a a roll cage mount for the GoPro. And the reason it's different is it gives you um, you know, the varying size of the roll cage diameter options, but it also gives you about like a four inch, um, arm for a GoPro mount to slide on. So you can do it close to the bar or out further from the bar. And then it has a ball mount on it so that you can position the camera at just the right angle. So a lot of these mounts, you put them on and it's, it gets off cant or it's got a tilt to it or whatever. Um, being able to put the, the 
the mount on the cage wherever you want it and then be able to move the camera, you know, side to side, up and down, uh, point it at you and then turn it around to the hood or whatever the case may be um, is a is a pretty stellar solution. So um, UPR.com, uh, they have them. They're about uh, 80 bucks. Um, and, uh, all these different things that we're talking about today will be on the website and we'll have a link down below in the description for you to visit. Um, but, uh, please go give them a, a, a look and, and see what they're like. They're a pretty unique solution that no one else is really doing right now. Um, so you cool. have a little upgrade to your winching solution. What's going on there? Yeah. So this is the, uh, the flat link closed shackle we're going to call it closed system winching if you've never done like closed system winching before once you try it you're probably not going to go back it's a really really uh, really all you need is a clevis and a toe strap and uh i mean you're talking about an ultimate failure point up around i think it's somewhere around 27 28 000 pounds give or take uh, the max load, yeah the load rating on it's about six thousand pounds and, the, and just one of the just one of the weird features that I love about it is it really tucks away and you don't have a hook just bashing off its fair lead all day. Um, I've had to deploy my setup so many times. It's ridiculous. Never had a failure, never had an, never had an issue whatsoever. And like I said, once you've gone, gone to that closed system, I think you're going to find it pretty dang attractive um, to find out whether or not that's for you. One of the easiest routes to go would be going to YouTube and just check out factor 55 site. They do a lot of their own product reviewing internally, and they've got some pretty interesting videos out there, but more or less from tutorials all the way up to uh, product demonstrations. But, you know, I've been running my setup for probably about eight or nine months right now, and uh, I'm not going back. That's that's going to be yeah, plus factor. Fifty five is just cool. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> we'll have the jewelry factor uh, locked <laughs> really down. Do. But, uh, yeah. you know, last year on uh, the guide, we actually had the pro link as a, as a suggested uh, by um, and they're a little bit different. They do the same exact thing, except that the pro link was, um, almost like a tongue sticking out of the, of the fair lead. And, uh, if you don't want it sticking out, if you want it to lay flat, this is where the flat link comes into play. It just folds 90 degrees into the fair lead. And, uh, they also have a, um, a protection plate to go over the pin so that you're not, um, getting rocks and stuff onto the synthetic and then wearing that out or the sun, the sun rod on the synthetic. So, uh, check that out. The flat, link XTV is the UTV specific version of it. Um, they have a whole bunch of different options for fair lead, uh, billet fair leads, things like that. They're made in America. And the thing I like most about Factor 55 is that they prove their product. They are scientific engineers that actually take the time to say, this product has been tested. It has been rated over and over again to these strengths. It's not just bulk made Chinese aluminum. Uh, you can rely on it and you can uh, enjoy the way it looks too. Yeah, and for 126 bucks right now, I think that's a direct deal that Factor 55 has going on their website. You uh, you really only you're just pulling a snap ring. That's it. You're in business. It's yep. a, it's a very very quick install. Very easy upgrade to your line. So. Yep. Um, all right, I'm going to jump into some of the discussion we had yesterday on the Dirt Life show about eating on the trail, and uh, when we went out. Um, you know, you can go kind of two directions. You can go all out with a cooler and ice and have steaks and chicken and all that like Wes had. Um, or you can do it like us where we were trying to do freeze dried food and, and pack light and easy and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that requires some sort of heat source, right? You, no matter which way you go, if you want warm food, you have to have a heat source. Um, and I came to rely on this little guy. This is the jet boil system. This is an old, like, version one version um, that Wes gave me because he was sick of me borrowing it from him. He just said, keep it. Um, so thanks to Wes for stepping up on that one. And uh, I'll pay You're it forward one of these days. Producer credit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, these things are pretty cool. Uh, they have inside of them um, an, an aluminum cup. It has the fuel tank. It has the stand. has all the components you need to boil water or make coffee. Uh, they have a French press attachment for it. They have all sorts of different things. And now they, they have different sizes as well. They have a micro version, they have a bigger version, and they have even a um, skillet version that you can pack away. And so they're super light. They, they take little fuel canisters and they boil your water within, I don't know, a couple minutes, minute, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm under three. I, I yeah. timed it once, so my, mine will do it in under three. Uh, great tool to have out there, especially peace of mind. You know, when you're going out and you get a lot of local resources and you can you can eat while you're on trail at like mom and pop shops and, and stores, that's that's very convenient. But 
you know, it is nice to know that you can sustain yourself for a day by having a small and real compact setup like that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty universally um, applicable to any kind of food. So if you're cooking uh, anything with water or any drinks that you want to have in the morning to wake up, a uh, great solution. Um, can't speak enough about it. And I'm probably going to be buying um, the skillet one and the one with the French press in it uh, for the wife and I when we go out. So um, thanks to Wes for introducing me. I knew that Ian had them and I've seen Ian use them before. Um, but I think that... Uh, yeah, everyone should have one if you're a camper. So um, those are about 85 bucks online for the newest version. That's an older version. The newer versions heat up even faster than the older versions. So if you find an older one on sale, they're going to be a great solution. But uh, the newer ones are uh, the Cadillac of jet boils. Yeah. So what do you got next? Oh, first aid, fun stuff, right? Safety. Um, we, we've never had to use first aid. <clears throat> I have deployed my first aid <laughs> kit on every single trip I've ever gone on. Um, the one that I use right now, I don't have it with me. It is the MyMedic MyFAC, which FAC sounds like a really weird word. It's F-A-K, which stands, stands for first aid <laughs> kit. You know, we can in, play with that in word. The, in uh, the online gaming world, FAC is a whole different meaning. So. Probably, probably. So um, I have no issues whatsoever with my kit. Like I, I love how compact it is. I love that it can pretty much mount anywhere. It's super durable. It keeps the dirt out. And believe me, if I were showing you my kit, it's black, but it's going to lurk like dust. Like it gets abused like you wouldn't believe. And it doesn't leave my X3. It's mounted on the X3 pretty much perpetually. Um, the only, it's, it's a great kit right now on their website, they have it at $84. And for what you get for $84, That's a steal. there's some great, great coverage there. The only adjustment that I made to it is, is when you start going down the rabbit hole of like first aid, uh, like Israeli bandages, some certain stuff like that, certain gauze is really, really convenient while you're out on trail. So I've made a few adjustments and brought, bought some stuff on Amazon specifically, like maybe another three to four Israeli bandages, a few more packs of gauze. Outside of that, this kit's got it all, man. It, I was really, really impressed with it. It's it's super easy to find stuff. It's very well organized. And like I said, it does, I'm blown away that it actually keeps the dirt out because uh, mine, I, I've had that thing so filthy, it's ridiculous. I've pressure washed my car with that thing hard mounted on there, taking direct blasts with the pressure washer, nothing on the inside has ever gotten water in on it. It's it's never saturated. It's it's a great kit, and for eighty four bucks, it gives you a heck of a lot of peace of mind. Yeah, and if you've ever looked at medic kits, they they get spendy fast, and so being at over half off a of retail, that's a that's a killer deal. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into uh, something different for us. Uh, we don't talk about uh, helmets and goggles a whole lot. Um, but I have a recommendation if I can knock everything over while I do it. Um, as ma many of you know, I used to work for 509, uh, a company that leads in snowmobile helmets and goggles and, and accessories, things like that. Uh, so I might sound a little bit biased when I start talking about these, but, um, these are the 509, uh, Kingpin MX goggles. And, um, I've been running, I don't know, three or four sets of these for the last two or three years. And, um, you know, a lot of guys out there don't wear helmets, um, but they will wear goggles because when the rain what? hits, <laughs> when the rain hits or when the fog's setting in or the sand roost is too much to deal with or, or whatever the case is, a lot of guys will turn to sunglasses and sunglasses don't really provide you a whole lot outside of just direct line of sight protection. They don't stop anything from coming in the sides and getting in your eyes. And when you're going 80 miles an hour down a dune, um, safety is a key thing and, and vision's a part of that, right? So, um, you know, I recommend everybody that they at least have uh, a driver set of goggles in the glove box just so that they're protected uh, when the time needs. And the Kingpins are super affordable. You can get them for less than uh, 40 bucks right now on sale um, through the various 509 dealers. And the thing I really like about these goggles is that they're universal. So you can use them in a helmet. You can use them without a helmet. They're not very deep. They're not like big, bulky, Oakley, you know, whatever goggles that you would see a snowboarder wear or something. They're, they're, they lay flat. They're comfortable. Um, I can wear them with glasses on. They have little cutouts for those. So they're a universal goggle. They're cheap. And uh, there's all sorts of different lenses you can get for them, um, including the new uh, Fusion lens, which um, basically just does not fog up. So if you're interested in a pair of goggles that will treat you right and, uh, and keep you safe, um, 
I recommend these 509 goggles. Cool. I too have a set of 509 goggles. They've treated me very, very well. Um, I'm a horrible person to give a goggle reference to, though, based <laughs> on the fact that I usually buy about eight pairs per year. They, yeah, they get, they get damaged very, very quickly. But or they walk, they <clears throat> walk away with your radios. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My turn. Oh, sure. All right. So, what has a limited lifetime warranty? Only draws at three amps and produces just shy of five thousand lumens. That is Baja Designs Squadron Pro. I would argue their most their most versatile light platform. I've seen these on everything from full size pickups to commercial equipment down to side by sides. They don't weigh a heck of a lot. They weigh about as much. Let me feel this. Yeah, it's two cores lights right there. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, they're IP sixty nine rated uh, IP sixty nine K rated, so they're waterproof and submersible up to nine feet. Some one of these days we'll actually test that out. Um, on purpose or yeah. not. Yeah. You know, I don't really have to go into a heck of a lot of describing on the squadrons because it's probably one of the most recognizable pods in the industry. Uh, very, very common to see these things on a number of different machines, but Baja Designs has been uh, with me on everything from my Husqvarna to my Yamaha and now my Can-M and uh, I've never had a failure. I've never had an issue. I could not say enough good stuff about it. And, you know, when you, when you hear people, lighting is a really controversial thing when it comes to UTV. People don't want to spend the money for superior product and they want the proof. You know, some people are willing to spend the money, but they want the proof that this stuff, uh, that the higher grade stuff, the, uh, the Baja designs of the world are actually worth the investment. Well, the life expectancy on the LEDs on these things, I, if I remember correctly, is just shy of 50,000 hours. 50,000 hours, that's ridiculous. So you, You'll retire before then. You will retire. You'll be moving these things onto new vehicles. It is, uh, you know, there's military spec ratings on every, I mean, obviously there are for lights, there are for batteries. I know that firsthand because I'm in the battery business, but uh, the Baja Designs exceeds all those military specs. And like I said, I couldn't say enough good stuff about the product that I've gotten from them. It's worked just amazing. Absolutely yeah, we've amazing. we've tested a handful of different products from them and, and not once have they ever let us down. So uh, yeah, in performance and- or in quality. Yeah, and these things are running right now on their website. You get an awful lot of light for $200 right now. And to speak to that, Baja Designs doesn't go on sale. That's not like a thing. No. And um, when you're talking about the premium uh, products, getting a sale on those is pretty unheard of. And so you're already saving $20 um, on the actual light pods. But right now, uh, they're doing something pretty unique where they're doing mail-in rebates, cash rebates. So um, if you buy a pair of them uh, of... You, you visit their website or visit our deal page. We have it all listed out. And uh, basically, when you buy a pair, you can get 50 bucks back uh, straight from Baja Designs. Um, and on, and if you step up into some of their um, smaller light bars and bigger pods, um, you can get 75 bucks back on a pair. And uh, on some of their bigger light bars, which are, are pretty spendy, um, and again, don't go on sale, um, you can get 150 uh, bucks back. So... Um, pretty unique situation where you can save some money um, and kind of um, lessen the the pain point of, of shelling out the cash for a premium product. Yeah. These, these specific ones in this box are the, are the squadron pro cornering light, which those flood style lights are actually really, really good around uh, campsites. You know, I, we use, when we pull into a campsite, we use one of two things. We usually use some sort of a flood light or we use our whips and, um, Zach and I don't usually have a tendency of setting up camp during the daylight. <laughs> <laughs> don't think we ever have. <laughs> so we, we usually start riding when the sun comes up and stop riding when the sun goes down. Um, but yeah, this BD, this BD gear is just off the chart. It's off the chart. I mean, it doesn't matter what they build. Everything's built to just a different level. You're and they, they have lens options too. So you can get them in just spot, spot and flood or flood. And then uh, they also have amber lenses and amber covers. So you can get the clear lens and then just have an amber cover in the glove box for when you need it. Right. So speaking of lighting up the uh, campsite, you have another pick. You're wearing it. Uh, On your head. Which one? My buggy whip? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can talk buggy whips. Let's no, so, just, just uh, include it since we're talking lighting. Yeah. So on my car, I, I run a four-foot, two four-foot white uh, buggy whip sticks. They, I actually was talking to Russell 
probably maybe two to three hours ago. Cause if you go to their website and you and you choose the whip that you want, there's this feature on there and it is essentially, if I remember correctly, um, I don't have it. Nope. I got it right here. So there's this feature it's visibility. And it, and if you click on the down, if you click on the down arrow on there, it'll say increase my visibility by up to 17,600 lumens. So I, I told him, I go, Hey, I need you to explain that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he basically said, he goes, yeah, we, we, ch- we, I can't even remember what the heck he said. Basically they switched to a different, uh, it, I don't know if it was a different circuit or what, it, what the heck it is. It's almost a totally like a, a, just a total revamp. And he was saying that, you know, on the white ones, the white ones are already so bright. It's ridiculous. Everybody knows that. Like if you've seen my Instagram, if you've seen some of the stuff that you put up in stories, uh, those white ones have been the backdrop for our campsite more times than we can count. And they're, and they're so bright that like even making them brighter, it's almost, it would be hard to pick up. But when you start changing colors on these things, if you run to the, to the red, you run to the purple, you run to the, to be teal, clear, you can't change the colors. You're picking a different color whip. You're picking a different whip. Yep. Um, these things are up to, like I said, these things are up to something to the tune of uh, 17,600 lumens. And you would think that that would translate to a hotter power draw. It's not. Those ones actually pull a half an amp less than, than the conventional. Really? Whip. So they're, they're onto something. They're onto something for sure. And I cannot confirm nor deny that uh, two might be heading my way right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to yeah. test this theory. <laughs> we, we, yeah. I, it, they may wind up not being white too, just oh. based on that fact. Yeah. Just, I, I would love to. Are they going to match your shoes now? Options. My Air Jordans? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm so stoked on buggy whips. Like you can, the owner and I actually joke that you could pull those things off lightsaber fight. <laughs> we not do any damage to them on <laughs> put them back on i mean this is actually a true story i mean you you were there we left uh we left a little brewery outside of lolo montana yep and we had to drive on the highway and we were following we were following one of our guys to a it was a, like an airbnb that we stayed at for one night and while we're on the road there i totally i was in the back and i lost you guys you know i i left the brewery, i'd left the restaurant it was a brewery uh last and when i lost it well last time i did a little radio call and i called up to the guy it was wes i called him up i'm like uh, hey wes turn your buggy whips on so i know which one's you converting <laughs> off the road and yeah he fired those things up and i was probably about i had to have been about a half mile back but yeah i knew exactly in where the I was rain going. yeah in the rain <laughs> multiple cars on the road but yeah they're they're incredible they're incredible i mean they're they're backed by the best warranty you're going to find in that industry too i mean they don't break i've hit those things everybody that has ever followed me has seen me just freaking nail those things on branches 60 70 80 miles an hour no problem there's, no there's been plenty of times where we've been filming and, and we're holding back while maybe you're out front getting filmed and we, all of a sudden we hear a whack. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, oh, well, he hit the branches. Yep. Yeah, last time I hit a tree with my buggy whip, it actually made that tree bleed. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the thing that people don't really understand is that buggy whips was born out of the uh, mining and construction industry, right? They're they're born in situation. Light. Yeah. Yeah. They were born out of having to having to be durable and and last a long time and justify the cost, right? So, um, you know, you're just getting that kind of durability and quality brought down to the UTV market. The, these things were made for a guy that's piloting a massive, massive dump truck, big earth mover on a mine site to be able to look down off this contraption and see a tiny little insect of a Ford F-150 because of that buggy whip light and know not to run that guy over on these mine sites. I mean, like it's a true task light. No right. question about it. Just well, built to a different standard. Let's jump into uh, maybe some of the storage options we took on some of these BDRs. Um, I know that on the Washington BDR, you tried uh, a, a hard box, and uh, I was trying some uh, some air ba- um, dry bags. And uh, on the second trip to Idaho, you switched over to dry bags, and we both have uh, some solutions here at different price points. Um, Colpin has been known for a long time to be kind of like a universal hunter's accessory for UTV ATV. Um, and they have these Culpin dry bags and, and I have them in three different sizes. I think I have like a, a 15, a 20 and a 40 or something like that. Um, I think, I think they're getting rid of all of their current models because they're on 
uh, less than half off, or I'm sorry, more than half off uh, on their website right now. So you can get a 40 liter dry bag for less than 20 bucks, which is pretty rad. Um, and I put those through both BDRs and uh, they held up great. There's nothing wrong with them. They are a no frills dry sack. Like it's just a tough bag. You put your stuff in it, get it done, throw it in the car. Um, but yours, um, yours are at a little bit different price point, but they have a lot of really cool features that I wish I had going in on that BDR. Can you explain to me? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what you're referring to is I, I had a, if I remember right, it was a 95 L Rome adventure case for our first trip this year. It was a hard shell case up on the roof and it works excellent. It worked excellent. It kept dirt out. It uh, kept water out. It was a great, great unit. I just have to put a little bit more thought into keeping it still. It, uh, it likes to move around on my roof a little bit. And that was really the only reason that I went to a duffel system because I saw a few of you guys running a dry bag, running a duffel. And I thought to myself, like I, I could probably pull it off. Like I didn't have so much uh, critical gear in there that uh, it would be susceptible to damage. So I switched to the, uh, basically the giant loop Tillamook dry bag. And that guy right there is 48 liters. If there's one thing I really like about it that I haven't seen too much in other dry bags, um, it's that it's accessible on both sides. It is set up, it's with like a BMW 1200 GS in mind. It's meant to go on adventure bikes. So why wouldn't it go onto a UTV? It goes onto a UTV flawlessly. And I, I've had really good luck with them. I have three of them right now. And if anybody that knows me and knows how much that we go out and do this sort of stuff, you guys know how much of a gear snob I am. And I love just changing things up and playing with stuff and trying new things. There's, I I'm in no, I'm in no hurry whatsoever to look for another application here. These things are a really great solution for me and I can haul so much gear. I mean, the, uh, the Idaho run, we had four Tillamook dry bags on the roof of my car. We had a Pelican in the back on the trunk, right next to a yeti cooler and there and that was everything that we needed for two people in a two-seater and, and that gives you a testament on how much room those things will hold so we we had a great setup we kept it light it was totally secure no water no dust got into any of that i couldn't say enough about it it's so great bag. so the difference between a basic dry bag and and like what you were using with the uh, giant loops is that um for one they have some side handles which would have been really handy uh, carrying them around uh, between camp and, and back to the car. Secondly, they had loops all the way down them so you could strap through them at various points and keep yep. them secure. Um, but the, one of the biggest things that I, I didn't even know that they were accessible on both sides. That's badass. I didn't even yeah. realize that. Um, yeah, they're accessible on both sides. And the other thing is, too, you wind up in a pickle. It's actually got a thing where you can strap it into a backpack and you, right. can, you can haul out. Right. And, and one of the biggest features that I found... Uh, because like I had dedicated bags, one for, you know, hammock camping, one for clothing, one for clean, clean up and prep and all that stuff. Um, but when you're shoving like a huge ba a sleeping bag and a hammock down into a bag, uh, there's a lot of ca captured air in there and your giant loops had an air valve and just like That's a pelican good. case, yeah. you could just pop the valve, shove everything in there, all the air escapes, and then you could just lock the valve back down. Um, that yeah. was a huge space saver. Yeah, I, I would implore anybody that's looking for a storage solution to, to to look into the adventure bike world. You know, those guys have been doing it a lot longer than when you have, and they have a lot of things figured out. Giant Loop is a massive name in adventure bike riding. So let me double check here real quick, Zach. What are we looking at on a, I mean, let's say those things are about 130 bucks. So that's yeah. what we have written down. Yeah, about 130 bucks. So yeah. Again, that's a 47 liter bag, right? That's a pretty good size bag and that can hold pretty much anything. Um, For sure. And being open on both ends, that's really cool because I was stacking stuff in, in order of priority, like how often I'm going to use it. And then eventually you're going to end up hitting that one thing where you have to get all the way to the bottom and dig everything out to get to it and being able mm -hmm. to swap it around to the other side. That's, that's pretty epic. It is pretty nice feature. Uh, I never once have guessed the right side. I've opened one side <laughs> looking for something and not, and had to flip it over. So what I'm hearing uh, you so saying is we're gonna have to label each of your bags. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but one bag, just for a reference, one bag, I was able to put uh, my sleeping bag, my tent, my tent poles, my camp chair, my pillow, and my mattress pad in one bag. 
Yeah. So there's a lot, a lot of capacity. Hey, Ian, I know you just yawn, so you know you can just come on over and grab another Chad box here and and down the can. For, want me to uh, trade you for an R5? Or? Absolutely, I'll bring you a case right now. Instant callback. <laughs> So, um, speaking of, uh, your, what you were packing to stay warm at night, you, you're, t- you have down here something different than anything we ever usually list. And that's a, like a hoodie. Yeah, I'm actually wearing it right now. It's the, uh, triple odd design Ranger LT. So I have been, we just covered it about five minutes ago. I'm a, uh, unapologetic gear snob through and through. Triple Odd Design has been a part of my wardrobe for probably about nine to 10 years, give or take. Uh, I won't even tell you how I discovered this company. It's so nerdy. It's ridiculous. But uh, it kind of attracts two different types. It attracts police officers, military personnel. It attracts hikers. Uh, So it has a mixture of the tactical Timmies and a mixture of the granola heads. I have never had a piece of triple out, triple out design gear fail me. What inspired me to buy this hoodie and this hoodie is probably about two years old. Uh, what inspired me to buy this hoodie was a story that I heard about a guy that was working. It was a ranger and he was working underneath an Abrams tank and it was connected, like somehow got drug behind this tank. Once they started taking fire, apparently they got drug for something to the tune of about 500 yards and the, and the hoodie didn't show any, any wear on it whatsoever. Um, I've worn this thing for a year and a half through every airport in America, beat on it. If you look at it on my Instagram, you'll see I'm wearing it pretty much at every expedition. It, it looks like it's brand new. It is a fan. It's a, it's a great layer. It's a really, really great layer. And I actually have a triple lot design, uh, stealth LT shell that goes over the top of it that I've been in windstorms, uh, snowstorms, rainstorms, actually in a tornado once with it. And, and that thing doesn't let an ounce of water in. Uh, Triple Hot Design makes more than just uh, uh, hoodies. They make, you know, they make a lot of purpose built clothing and I've always just had a great luck with it. And this hoodie's no exception. Yeah, that's, and it's not a cheap hoodie. Um, it's not like <clears throat> you're going to find it at Walmart. It's a very specific type of clothing that, you, that a person that with specific needs wants uh, is going to buy. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a polar tech. It's, it's very water resistant. This is an older model. Like I think nowadays, I think they have, they have it to where you can escape like some media wiring up through it. So if you wanted to wear it while you were running or uh, needed some headphones on or something, but it, it's a, it's a great layer. Absolutely phenomenal layer. Cool. And, um, triple I, it's spelt uh, triple and then a U G H T, um, for those that are looking for that. Um, and, uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, we missed this one. I was going to mention this with the bags. Um, the D the D Mata creative trail essentials. Oh, pouch. Yeah. Do you yeah. got one of those in there? Yeah. You were actually just talking about cam, uh, oddly enough, like when I started ordering these things in cam and I started talking about them and, and he cams actually done some media for him. So Demata creative is based out of Idaho. It is a guy that works a nine to five, like we all do. And as soon as he's done, he goes home, hops on the sewing machine and uses these Kevlar, uh, he makes these little Kevlar pouches and bags. I put everything in there from my, uh, you know, the earlier I had the headlamp in there. I'll put my headlamp in this thing. I'll put, uh, and I've got a number of these things. I probably got like 10 of them or something. Um, uh, iPhone charge cords, headphones, all those little things that you sticks. need to go with you yeah. on your trip that you don't have a good place to put them. Yeah, this is this is where I put my in my Tillamook bag, my Demata Creative bag inside my Tillamook bag. This is where I put my uh, deodorant, my toothbrushes, everything. Like I said, and they come in a number of different sizes. And this isn't the only color you can get. You can get, you can get blue. You can get there's black and colors, all kinds all of sorts stuff. Of ones, yeah. Yeah, it's real durable and super. Yeah, I mean they're just they're just cool, and I love the idea too that we're just kind of supporting uh, supporting this guy's supporting little, little guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a website link there. Uh, you're putting that up, aren't you, yep. on the website? Yep. Yeah. So the link will yeah. be in the description below, and we'll have it on our website with all the items that we're listing off on the show today. And this little bag right here uh, comes in a pack of about I want to say four to f- three to five of them. They have a three pack and a five pack. Yeah, yep. and, and they're all different uh, sizes. Yeah, it's 32 bucks. So, there yeah. You go. And, and like I said, they're, they're for all the little things that you have to take that you don't have a good place for. So, it's a great solution. It doesn't, it seems weird to think about just buying a little bag that has a zipper on it and that's it. 
but uh, yeah. when you can throw all your little knickknacks into it and then throw that into a door bag or throw that into the glove box or under the seat or whatever, uh, makes life so much easier. Yeah, we'll find a home, you know, if it stores something, we'll figure out something to put in there. That's for sure. <laughs> So um, going to kind of some of the troubles we had on the trail, um, some people uh, like to run hard through the Baja or through the desert, things like that, uh, or just right behind somebody at high speeds. And, and a lot of times what will happen is you'll get uh, rocks or chips in your your cooler, your um, intercooler or in your, your radiator, things like that. Um, so I wanted to mention this option. This is uh, a all-in-one repair kit from solder weld and if you're not familiar with solder weld they've been around the baja scene and the uh, southwest racing scene for quite a while um, but uh, basically what they have is a diy um, soldering kit for anybody so in other words you don't have to have a welder to use this kit you can use a welder but it's it's overkill for what you're doing uh, sometimes you just get a little nick in your radiator and it's leaking and you have to just patch it up so that you can get back to camp um, and so what these are is they come with the rods, uh, the soldering rods and the flux uh, in both um, aluminum and then also just like a generic metal, like a steel uh, kit, uh, all in one bag. And all you have to have is a torch. So if you have a camping stove that can put out a torch or if you've got um, some propane or, or anything like that in your uh, survival kit, um, you just bust that out, it, get it up, heat it up, and you can solder fix your radiator. You can weld a tab back onto the frame. You can, you know, fix anything that is a minor welding job on the trail with just a torch. So um, it also comes with some heat reduction flux. So if it's next to plastic, you can just smear it on there and it'll, it'll reflect the heat for you and not melt or, or burn the hose that maybe is right next to where you're um, repairing. Um, but a pretty awesome kit for uh, all those guys that are out there getting pretty aggressive and following and racing, things like that. So they're about 120 bucks for the kit. And it, like I said, it comes with both the rods and flux for both aluminum for your radiators and then steel for a, a generic metal repair kit for steel and other various metals that you would find in, in your, throughout your UTV. So um, the other day we, we found a crack in, in, in the cage we were uh, messing with and, and we could have easily just, you know, if that was a f catastrophic failure for us, we could have busted out a torch and repaired that on the fly. And then speaking of being stranded, uh, a sure bet for any gift guide. Um, oh, you want to jump to that guy? We can go to that guy. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> you know, um, I, I hear trouble. This little guy saves our bacon. Oh, we're going to get so. to that for sure. <laughs> so uh, the next thing I have on my list is um, just being able to have an extra UTV belt. There is no UTV owner that drives a CVT machine that will be upset if you give them a utv belt for christmas as long as it's to their machine so um the first recommendation especially, especially if it comes in a savage case <laughs> yeah so last season we recommended a savage belt uh case um and that still is a recommendation today they're still on our machines i mean we put a savage case on your car right in the wheel well right above the the cvt housing has that I've thing broken asked. or no, I've been asked, like, how long do you expect that Savage case to last? I'm like, I'll move it to the next machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not having a problem or hiccup, it's, and it's, it's right there right when you need it. So 100%. Um, protects your belts, airtight, uh, waterproof, and uh, hasn't had any problems. It's um, heat resistant. It's like a Pelican case for your belt. So yeah. um, with the price of belts these days, you know, being anywhere between 150 to 250 bucks, um, you know, you want to protect that investment, and you want to make sure that when it goes into the clutch housing that it's, it's clean, and it's not going to introduce more friction to your clutch to cause more uh, damage so um great stocking stuffer it'll make the stocking look really weird on the shelf but uh i guarantee you the the utv owner that you give it to is going to be extremely happy to get that present this uh holiday season so, so uh utv belts and and from that i'm going to transition into when you run out of belts on the trail, when you go through six belts on the trail, like let's just say you happen to have a, a 2015 Razor and you've eaten through six belts on the trail. and 14. You have to, <laughs> 14? Wow, I thought it was a 15. Yeah, uh, it's an old dog. Uh, and you are stranded in the middle of the North Idaho Panhandle Forest and uh, you're 80 miles from the next city and you need to text a buddy that happens to be camping 20 miles from you that happens to have extra belts uh, how are you going to do that with no cell service, Ian? Uh, well, one way you can do it is this little guy right here. This is the um, the Garmin InReach Mini, and it saved our bacon on the Idaho run 
probably, um, I think we had to coordinate using that thing maybe about two different times. Uh, for I, sure. think, I think we critical. were on that thing at least 50 times on the trip, but essentially now, at least two or three times. It could be. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee I probably sent somewhere to the tune of about 20 messages through it just myself, let alone everybody else. But we sourced a belt with it. We staged a recovery with it. Um, and I on the Washington look, Trail, we did it yeah. like three or four times as well. You bet. You bet. Now this is a great little unit for sure. It it'll, it'll save you. It'll save you for sure. I mean, it, it absolutely would. I mean, if it's absolutely critical and it has to be relayed like right now, there can be a little bit of hiccup from the standpoint that it can take anywhere from I've seen as slow or as fast as 15 seconds for a text to go through, but I've seen as long as 10 minutes to right. go through. So it all depends on how, it, how visible the sky is uh just how things are running you know i've had some pretty open areas been in a canyon where it took a few minutes for it to get through but i've never not had one go through um the, the important thing to do before you leave is though is do a test one because whoever it is that you're going to send recovery aid requests to they're going to get a number that they're not familiar with right. you know and you get it it's much like twitter you don't you only have a certain amount of characters that you can use. So before you leave, make sure you test it, make sure you send that number to somebody that you would rely on to, uh, to coordinate a, a rescue attempt or something that, you know, source a part that you might need, but they, they're incredibly handy. No question about it. We've used them a ton over the last, it was funny too, is before the Washington run, we'd never had a use for one. We, uh, go into Idaho and just, I don't even know what we would have done without them. <laughs> you know, that, that, that one recovery problem that we had where we ran out of belts, you should never run out of belts, but we had a machine that was, I think it had some alignment issues had definitely had some driver modifications that needed to take place, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> sorry, bam. <laughs> no, that was, but, it was donkey. Wasn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. I think it was. Yeah. 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 Um, but nonetheless, uh, these things, these things have proven their worth. And, uh, if you buy it direct from Garmin, it's 350 bucks plus a subscription and subscription, you can modify as you go. I mean, it's like 10 bucks a month, but you can move it up to a 60 month or $60 a month program. Uh, you do that before you go on a big expedition, right? You move it to that 61. Cause you get, so you basically get like unlimited, uh, and unlimited basically you don't have to pay for it until you're ready to use it. So exactly. It can sit dormant <laughs> yeah. for the all winter. And then when you're ready to go out in the spring, you can just start up the program again. So yeah. let's just explain a little bit of what this does because we've been talking to it. Like everyone knows what it is. Uh, it's a Bluetooth GPS handheld unit that is yep. got a, I think it's a, like a, a 10 to 12 hour battery in it or something like that. Um, and then uh, it Bluetooths to your phone or your tablet or whatever, and you can actually use it as a GPS unit for your mapping software. Um, but it also has the ability to send messages as well. So you can send location information and text messages through your phone uh, or from through your Garmin phone text, through the Garmin, Garmin up to the satellite. Yeah. Yep. And use a dedicated app for it. Yep. And so the nice thing about that is, for one, you can communicate where there's no communication in the first place. Uh, two is that you can actually set it up to have um, the website track you. And so you can have it update every 10 minutes or whatever it is. And then the loved ones at home or your buddies back at camp or whatever can know where you're at at all times. Um, and if you're going on big expeditions like we are, um, that's a pretty useful tool as well because you're not having to check in all the time. Um, they're able to see a live updated map of where you've been and where you're at now. So uh, that alone is a huge benefit just for the family's peace of mind and, and things like that. And if let's just say something were to happen, that having that track record of where you've been and where you are last moment um, could save your life. So um, pretty awesome unit has SOS functionality has um, rescue services functionality. Um, yeah, badass little unit. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're going to be going out in the back country, you can't rely on your cell phone at all. You know, you have to rely on, uh, and this is this is a much easier thing to bite off than a sat phone. You know, a sat is going to cost eighty to eighty bucks a month, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, it's that this is worth its weight in gold, for sure. And and like we said, we've relied on it more times than we can count. And uh, before before our trips, we never really thought about investing the money until after we've seen it in in use, um, saving our bacon. So um, if you plan on being out in the in the woods or out in the the desert or anything like that, consider one of these as almost a, a must have. Um, and that brings me to my GPS. So 
This is the uh, dual SkyPro GPS receiver. It's the XGPS 160, and it's pretty small and compact. It's less. Uh, it's smaller than a deck of cards. And I first came aware of this little guy when uh, we were thinking about doing the Washington BDR, and I didn't have a good mapping solution. And um, I didn't really want to invest a thousand bucks into a GPS head unit like a Lowrance or something like that. Um, and I wanted to have something that was a little bit more modular and flexible with the different uh, devices that I had. Um, and so, oddly enough, I was looking at the mapping software and I was looking at lead nav software. And uh, these guys, um, in all the racing that they do, uh, use these little these little units. And so, what it is um, is it's a little puck, a GPS puck. And it has a 10 hour battery in it. Um, it has a USB port for you to charge it off of or to do upgrades, things like that. But it, it is a 10 Hertz GPS unit compatible with GLONASS and all the different satellite systems. Um, it, can, it can connect up to, I think, like 50 different satellites at once or 100 different satellites at once, something like that, and be super precise, super accurate. It updates at 10 times a second. Um, so your cheap, cheaper GPS units um, will update uh, roughly at about... Uh, five times a second or less. Um, some of them you can get down to one time a second or even less than that if they don't have a good selection of satellites. Um, but because this one is compatible with all the satellite systems, you can pretty much guarantee no matter where you're at, um, you're going to have at least 10 or 12 satellites at any point in time. Um, the cool thing about it is that it's Bluetooth, so it can, it can connect up to five different devices at once. Uh, so if you have a GPS in front of the driver, a GPS in front of the co-driver, um, uh, one on your phone, whatever, they can all use that GPS signal all at the same time. Um, and so the way I used it was I had uh, two-sided tape to my dash, had the iPad on the dash with it, and then I had them into the power system so they could charge. Um, and then what I did is I'd run, when we were actually driving, I'd have them plugged in and charging. And then at night, they were using, utilizing the battery so that if anything were to happen, um, we could still utilize that GPS data, even though it hadn't been charging all night. So um, the one thing that I can say about it is uh, on both BDR trips, I never once outran my GPS. I never once had a question of which turn to take, and I had never once questioned my location on the map. Um, the 10 hertz refresh rate is is just a game changer if you are requiring on the fly directions where you need to make the turn correctly at speed and you can't just stop and, and figure out where you're going. So there was plenty of times where, you know, some of the other GPSs on the trips, you know, were five seconds behind you or something like that. And um, this one never let me down and I was pretty impressed with it. So if you're looking to have a modular system where you have a tablet mapping solution set up, or if you're using your phone and you can't rely upon the GPSA, which is the cell phone enhanced GPS um, that all the cell phones use, um, you know, this is a great solution for everybody. And you can just take it out, put it in your pocket and, and go hiking with it. Or you can um, put it in the truck um, on the way to wherever you're going. It's a kind of an all faceted solution for any device uh, or situation you find yourself in. So um, it's a great solution uh, as an alternative to like, the Garmin handheld Bluetooth or the um, the various ones that you might find at like Cabela's or whatever. Um, and it's a lot more flexible because it's the software is completely up to you. You're not beholden to whatever comes on the device as a interface. You can pretty much just use whatever software you want. So um, the Dual Sky Pro GPS, GPS 160 is about 150 bucks. Um, and I guarantee you that if that's the kind of setup that you're going to be running, it's going to, it's going to meet your needs. So um, the, only, the only downside to this thing is that it has a mini USB port, which is the older square T looking shape plug. Um, but as you can see on mine, I just have uh, the plug put into it with some Sugru, so it's watertight and it never comes off. So it um, works great for me. That's, that's the end of our list. Ian, we've, we've done it again. We have... Yeah, I I, I don't know if we covered it or not, but it doesn't hurt to beat it to death. Uh, pretty much isn't anything on either one of our lists that we aren't currently running. Yeah, I th everything on here has been tested and proven as valuable to us in what we do. 
um, on the trail. Um, none of these things are paid for. None of these are sponsored. These are all things that um, I would put my name behind as recommending to any one of my friends, family, coworkers, whatever, um, as things that they should consider buying. So um, take that for what it's worth. We're not, you know, huge celebrities or anything. We don't have any kind of that size clout, but we can definitely tell you that this is trail tested stuff and um, that uh, we, we find value in it. And so we hope that you do too. And that said, if Triple Out Design does call and want to do a deal with us, we are open for business. So, yeah, <laughs> I would agree with that. Uh, we could use some uh, some branded clothing around here. That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, we didn't talk about it at the beginning, but we have a special um, kind of announcement to have on the show. Uh, you'll, if you've been on our website or social today, you probably would have had seen that already, anyways. But. Um, I've recently been on the Dirt Life podcast or Dirt Life Show uh, podcast uh, recently a couple times, and we teamed up with them and some of their sponsors at KMC Wheels to have a 2020 holiday giveaway of a full set of wheels for your UTV. So um, we have the KMC KS234 Addict 2 wheels, which are kind of like a universally badass looking wheel um, in satin gray. So they'll match any car that anyone has. Um, they are also a beadlock wheel. So you have the ability to pop tires on and off on the trail. If that is something that has to happen as well as if you're in the dunes and you want to go super low pressure, um, you can air down and still have the reliability of the beadlock. Um, these are $255 wheels individually, and that's, uh, over a thousand dollars that you're going to be getting if you win this, this giveaway. So, um, all you have to do is follow, uh, KMC wheels, uh, the dirt life show and side by side guys on Instagram. Uh, we'll have a post on our social page, our Instagram page, uh, for the giveaway. You'll need to tag a friend. Um, and then, uh, share the story in your, or share the post in your stories. And that's all you have to do, uh, to win a thousand dollar set of wheels for your UTV. So, um, these are awesome wheels. We can't thank KMC enough to, uh, for giving us the opportunity to give away a set of their wheels. Um, uh, George at the dirt life show, uh, stand up guy that, um, hooked us up with there. And so, uh, follow KMC wheels, the dirt life show and side by side guys on Instagram. Um, I would hope that if you're listening to this podcast right now, you are already subscribed to the side by side guys uh, social media channels but um, uh, for this contest and the dirt life show and the dirt life show uh, I think you were listening in last night we were on I was on there and you were listening in yeah you guys brought me up when you were talking about spicy food and I think <laughs> you know the answer to that so so I'm just gonna call you out George there's a chip sitting here waiting for you. We're uh, we're we're gonna have to put I this together. <laughs> <laughs> I I haven't put I haven't put Ian's name on any one of these yet but no need. I think, I think we're going to have to have you MC the event. Yeah, but, we can, um, I can do that. I, uh, can do I think that. what we're going to try to do is uh, maybe try to get some other personalities involved and have uh, a chip off on the old Zoom call and uh, see how the, uh, that goes. I think that'll be pretty entertaining. Ranked by who cries first? <laughs> who grabs the milk first? I think that might... Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be able to talk once they put that in their mouth. So um, You have one before. Are, are I you, have not you... done one yet. I mean, I, I really? eat a lot of spicy food, but I have kept these on the shelf to trying to figure out what to do with them. And I think this is the way where they're going to go down. So, um, you know, this might take me out. Who knows? Maybe I found my limit. Um, but I'm, I'm a spicy food connoisseur. So, oh, dude, I'm down to MC it. I'll, I'll pull out my inner Howard Cosell. I'll be like, <laughs> clearly a sight to be hauled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for it. Um, nice. So uh, just to wrap up, guys, uh, we have everything that we've talked about on the podcast today on our website, on the gift buying guide, and you'll have links to all the different products. Again, none of this was sponsored. None of this was paid for. None of this is anything that someone has in some way incentivized us to put on the podcast or on our website. These are all things that we have used. We have proven to be valuable products, and we want to uh, enable you to have the same experience. So uh, check those out. Um, if you are in the need of any of these items, pick them up. If you have a, a loved one or a partner that uh, could benefit from any one of these things or just the peace of mind of these things, um, check them out and, uh, and, uh, check out our, uh, sales guide that came out today as well. So we have a full rundown of everybody that participated in our request to get this 
2020 holiday deals out there. So if you go to our website and um, you've already done the gift guide here, you can also look at the sales guide. And what that is, is a full list and rundown of all the Black Friday deals, all the Cyber, Cyber Monday deals, and anyone that's and participating past that of everything from tires and wheels to recovery equipment to safety equipment to apparel deals, accessory deals, lighting upgrades, all sorts of different stuff are found on this page. And it's it's like I was saying last night on George's podcast, it's kind of like the hearkening back to when I would be a little kid on Sunday getting the newspaper with my dad and my mom and my brother and going through all the different ads that because the newspaper was two inches thick that day of all the sales that were going to be happening that Black Friday and, and figuring out what we wanted to go buy for each other for ourselves, whatever. Um, I'm bringing that kind of interaction back to the UTV community and, and bringing all the sales into one page so that you can benefit from all the sales that uh, all these great brands are having. Yeah, you just gave me deja vu. I totally forgot about those days. Sears catalog would show up. You'd look at all the cool new toys, and then you had the lingerie section. It was hey. win win. <laughs> yeah, what happened to those? Sec oh, never mind. Um, it, it all went online. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how different things pop up nowadays, though. So, uh, yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, if you want to participate in the giveaway, like I said, go visit our website. We'll have a rundown of the information there, but it's going to link you to our Instagram post where you're going to need to, uh, tag a friend, share it on your stories and then follow our three pages. So, uh, good luck to all of you that are out there. Um, hope you win a nice new set of, Oh, I didn't mention this. So if you win the KMC wheels, you get to pick from whether those are 14 by sevens or if they're 15 by sixes. And you can pick the, the lug pattern. So you're not just getting stuck with leftover wheels that happen to be sitting in the corner collecting dust. You're actually selecting the size and the lug pattern for your car. So you'll be able to put these directly on your car as soon as you get them. So that's pretty awesome of KMC to do that. And uh, yeah, shout out to George for hooking us up on that. And uh, for everybody else, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We got a lot of awesome videos coming out for uh, YouTube. Um, one of my goals is to be completely caught up with all our video projects this year uh, before going into 21 so that we can be uh, super efficient on getting content out to you folks. So follow us on YouTube. There's going to be a ton of uh, awesome video, including the Washington BDR Dang, and for six months, <laughs> including the Washington BDR and the Idaho BDR. Those will be coming out as soon as humanly possible. As soon as I can get them edited down. So, um, look forward to seeing you guys next time on the podcast until next time. Peace. Peace.